Mike, we almost had a train accident. You wouldn't believe it. Sarah was in front. Sarah, Alex, me. I got the camera up because that's what I do, you know? She crosses, she slows down to cross the tracks. As she's crossing the tracks, the red lights start flashing. The bars came down, hit the chisel plow, and the train goes through. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. All right. Well, we're getting things fueled up here. And this one particular farm that we're on, we're gonna be able to finish plowing today. I ended up blowing a hose on this disc ripper last night i plowed with it for about an hour like that uh, it's just the down hose so i unhooked it from the remote and i just used gravity for it to go down i wasn't able to power the cylinders to power the wheels up but we just ran it in float and that worked fine so we've got the 9560 fueling out of the 300 gallon tank we got the 8360 filling out of the 100 gallon tank and then hopefully there's enough fuel left for me uh 400 gallons of fuel with three tractors this size really doesn't uh go the whole day so um we obviously need a bigger fuel trailer don't we we should probably put a couple more tanks in the back of the truck. We do have room on this trailer for another tank, but this truck is uh, not liking all this weight too much. With parts in the back and whatnot. So, uh, yeah. So we've just got a couple of things to replace on these plows. Alex is working on something here. She's got a, a pin coming out of one of her which one is that it's on this side got a roll pin coming out of one of the lower pins on the shank so we've got a pound of roll pin in there which one was it uh, that one's loose right there did you just put a nut on that one no that one's loose we got to tighten that one up uh, I thought I seen it here last night. She brought it to my attention here. So one of these roll pins is coming out of the pin. We've got to pound one in to it and uh, get a nut on there. And then we'll be ready to go here. Well, we just got done replacing this hose. Now it's this one right here, and it goes only back. It only goes back to this joint right here. So it. All right. So we just got done replacing this hose, which it connects right here, and then it just goes up to the SCV on the tractor. Yesterday I had a couple of bolts that were broke on that c-spring there and on the one on the other side and that was what we had to fix yesterday morning i ended up breaking an arbor or a hub on the center uh disc assembly so i had to order one of those so we've got a disc missing on that other side and it looks like our tips are pretty good for the most part i've got this one back left one that i don't know i might as well replace it i guess so yeah we're going to replace that and get this pulled up to the fuel tank here i had uh, this pin um the end of it was broke off the other day so i welded this on there and the knot was missing on the other side i put one on there but i couldn't get it to go on only about halfway and that is now moving so we've got to keep an eye on that so alex is full of fuel she's got a broken shank i've got to get one of those and uh 
she'll have to run my plow until I get back here with that. Okay, we are now back on location. Why I didn't have these parts with me is beyond me. But we do have a broken frame there. Um, we're going to go ahead and replace the uh, spring pack. The, these, well, we'll show you here in a minute. So I ended up loading up with another batch of another 100 gallons of fuel here. And I may or may not have put that fuel cap back on. So that seemed to have leaked out through the fill hole on the way over. So here is the frame that we're going to go ahead and replace. We had just one of those. I've brought a shank over for this disc ripper because um, that's probably going to break one today. And then, of course, I'm going to have to make another trip home. And then I brought a new shank over for this chisel plow. We've got three of these total and five of these. So if I'm going to have to order another one of them today. So are you ready? Get this on there. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. We're going to go ahead and get this taken apart and get it back together here. Well, we have this all together. But it was a little bit of a challenge. And the reason why is because... These frame pieces are different. We were going on an extended bracket up there and the bottom of these brackets here are different and we could not get this one to work in that position. So we had to take this unit off and we had to move it over to that extended one. So we ended up putting a different spring on there. We had a machine shop machine some of these. Put a, they actually put a steel bushing in some of these uh, spring packs. So that one's got one uh, done. I want to find one, another one that he did. This has got the plastic nylon uh, units in there. Here is a metal one here. And what happens is the hole gets wore out and then this piece comes ahead and it hits uh, down on this side. So I had somebody mention a while ago, geez, Andy, just flip the spring over. It don't work, does it? We accidentally put the spring on wrong and it is wider back here than it is up there. So it's nearly lunchtime now and I'm ready for a ham sandwich. Are you? Yeah? <laughs> we should be stuffing our face right now, you know. We nom nom. Seriously. We could show a, we could show a full course meal as we're eating it in the tractor and stuffing our face and yeah. drooling all over ourselves and yeah. getting everything dirty. So, you should be good for a few hours without any breakdowns now. I hope it's not. Yeah. Well, I think we got a roll pin missing there. It, I think. Half of it, yeah. We'll have to get a new one in that. We had to put a roll pin in this pin here, which this was a challenge because the pin wouldn't come out far enough. So, yeah, let's go get something done. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Well, we hope to get done with this whole farm here today, but this a little bit of a breakdown took a little longer than I thought it would take. So, yeah, she's going to giddy up, and I'm going to roll out as well. So she's just rolling out, and I kind of forgot to show you what we had exactly wrong here. So the front part of this main frame piece that holds the shank got all tore about, and then this spring assembly here needs to have uh, those steel bushings put in there so there is nylon bushings I've got a bag of them here somewhere that you can go ahead and replace as needed you get this baggie open so you got these nylon bushings that are supposed to go 
and this piece here and of course uh the same bushing gets used and this there uh this piece here so we've got well i guess this isn't as war as i thought it would be but you put this bushing in there and it's just going to wear through it uh in a pretty good amount of time so i originally thought that we would have to throw this away but we might be able to just pound this back clean it all up and re-weld it so we better get plowing here if we want to get done on this farm today well we are right over next to the great new york state thruway traffic has been running pretty steady here all day just for your guys's reference it is friday april i don't know 24th or something like that and we've got 21st friday april 21st so we've got just a little bit left in this field here we have bmr uh, silage planted in this field here uh, last year and the year prior to that we had a grain corn uh, on this field so like i was saying i've got just a little bit left here alex and sarah are plowing over next to the cow barn and i've got a couple of smaller fields to do down on well down on route 31 for those of you that are local to the area here so i ended up breaking a sea spring on my second pass around the field i just caught the disc peeking up out of the dirt as i was getting ready to go by that second pass around the field so i've got that riding in the cab here with me and We'll have to get a sea spring on there in the morning. So it's the very outside one on the left. I broke bolts out of the one that's on the right. And I had the, I don't know, it's the fourth, I think it's the fourth one over from the left. Uh, the bolts got all bent up on that here two days ago and we had to fix that here uh, yesterday morning so we've got a beautiful day here traffic is just absolutely ridiculous as far as how many people are ramming up and down the road here and yeah so we'll get done with this one we'll see how the girls are making out i've got to drive past them to get to the next field that I'm going to do with this disc ripper. This does a pretty good job. This isn't exactly the tool that you want to probably use every year. But they did spread a fair amount of manure on these two fields. And then of course they were running back and forth across this ground to get into that far field that's on... The other side of that hedgerow so this has well as you can see it's got individual discs on the front each and every one of them discs is hooked to a c spring and then it's just got regular uh disc gang on the back five shanks this tractor would probably pull i don't think it'd pull nine but it would pull a seven shank with no problem We've had this for quite a few years. We don't use it all that much, but um, I wanted to get it out and start using it to just kind of break up some of these high traffic areas and to kind of help speed this plowing process up a little bit. Uh, we won't plant anything until probably a week from today. So sometime next week, weather permitting, we'll uh, get these planters rolling so we'll join up with you in a little while here once we move along to the uh, next field here 
One more time, up and back. We just got rid of our disc assembly. You can just barely see Alex on the other side of the road up in behind the cow barn here. And Sarah's in that same field. They have been sticking together and I have been jumping around doing other fields here. So this particular farm here, we own the farm but we rent dairy facilities out to another gentleman and he milks cows over here this farm is 18 miles away from our home farm so you can see Alex up on the hill and we should be able to see Sarah here in a minute up on this hill or something here but they had spread manure on this and it was kind of wet so we've kind of uh, we're getting into doing this uh, last, and I don't see. Uh, I can see Alex pulling up more to the top. Oh, there's, there's Sarah right there on the side hill going towards the barn. So they've got another field to do on the other side of this that hedgerow to Sarah's left. And um, the fields that I have to do are. Down on the uh, main road here. So we'll keep after it. Kind of a boring little video here with just plowing and what have you. But um, yeah, it is what it is. So we'll keep you posted. Well, the girls, they ended up plowing these four fields that are on either side of the road here yesterday. And this one field up here to our right is rather steep. Got a real nice side hill in it. And we farm it with the side hill. Now, one of the fields I was in the other day is a steep hill that we work going up and down it and it is long I mean real long the hill is uh, it, it goes quite a ways and I had somebody mention oh why don't you farm it the other way well we would tip something over on that hill and it is a lot longer than this one right here so we have some issues combined in that field we have to go at it from both directions so we have to make sure that the grain tank is empty and it is not so fun with a combine that's got single wheels on it so Sarah ended up plowing that one Alex couldn't stay in the seat of her tractor and the fields that I have to do are these two fields while well, there's one and then another one on the other end of it just kind of kitty corner from where we have to stop at the intersection here so uh, we've got these two fields here and the one field that the girls are plowing in along with one other field on the other side of the hedgerow and then that's going to do it for this farm. So this is Route 31 here and um, yeah so wait for the traffic to clear. I'm going to pull out right after this pickup. And we're going to hope that we are in the field before that tractor trailer comes. So we're just going to jog along very nicely here. We could pull in the field right after this mailbox. 
he's gonna slow down a little bit. He's probably cursing at me right now. But... Oh well, yeah. Well, we are just getting done plowing that piece there. We plowed that one to our left. The other one down on the end of it here, there is an open ditch that runs down in between the two fields, so we can't farm it as one field. I plowed that up in there here uh, the day before yesterday. You can't quite see that field. And the field that the girls are on now is 70 acres and they've got about half of that done. They're done in behind the barn. And it doesn't look like we are going to get this done here today, this farm that is. Uh, it's unfortunate, but that breakdown took quite a bit of time to get Alex's plow sorted. I spent a lot of time on the phone here this afternoon ordering up new parts for that Landall chisel plow. The brackets that we put on, there's two different ones and it tried in the Landall description it tried to say there's a, a bracket that pins from the right and a bracket that pins from the left but all of our brackets all pinned from the left side and have the knot on the right hand side so I really don't know what they're talking about there but it looks like we have the correct bracket to replace that one that we had in our arsenal of parts that we had had for a couple of years and I ended up buying two more of those frame pieces and a handful of other uh, parts that we are getting low on. We had some U-bolts that we had to replace on Alex's plow here today and we had one that we replaced on uh, Sarah's plow yesterday. So a lot of this stuff we keep on hand and then we just have to remember as we use the stuff, hey, we're getting low. Well, look at what has arrived back here at the farm. We're actually just getting ready to go to the field. And uh, Mike took Jared down to get the 900. And what they had found was the oil cooler was leaking. So we're just going to open the hood quick here. So they ended up flushing the uh, engine out. They removed the oil pan, they removed the oil cooler. They put the oil cooler into, oh, they warmed it up. They tested it, it didn't fail the initial test. However, when they put it in a, through a cold test, it failed the cold test. So they've got new cooling in it, new uh, oil. They requested that we change the oil at about 100 hours. And Jared's going to put this on the manure tanker. So at least we were blessed with some good news. All of this is warranty, of course. We're hoping that this does not rear its ugly head again. They did say that um, the coolant more or less dumped into the base when it got real cold out. And um, it was a good thing that we didn't end up driving it any more than we had to, right? So we might as well get going here, right? All righty. Well, we are on location right now. Today should be the last day of plowing over on this farm. So I had to replace a couple of uh, tips on this disc ripper. 
the girls had to change a couple on their chisel plows they are rolling out as you can see we got Sarah right here and then Alex is just getting situated right now so they've got a field to do on the other side of that hedgerow over there we'll join up with them once we get done with the small field that we have to do so we'll go ahead and get after it here uh, they said that we are probably going to see rain by 2 or 3 o'clock this afternoon and I'm hoping that we are done and out of the area and moving equipment to the next location where we are going to plow. Mike, he's running an offset disc, so we'll be joining up with him later on today as well. So this is the field here that we have to plow. It's just a little tiny field that's wet to our right and it's wet here to our left. So we're going to plow what we can of it and then we're going to help the girls finish up where they're at and hopefully we can get out of here before it rains. The tractor's going to get a little dirtier than I want it to get, but I've got to wash it anyways. This is the tractor that we use on the corn planter. So, well, let's get after it here. Hopefully we can get through this. Just a little wet right there is all. Well, we just got done doing that last little small field that I had to do. And now we're going to pull into this big one and help these guys get this one finished up. So at last count, I had like 13 or 14 fields that I had done over here on this farm. I picked out a lot of the small ones and three corner pieces and five corner pieces and 18 corner pieces and so on and these guys plowed the bigger fields so this field here is I can't remember right 70, uh, 70 acres I think it is 60 or 70 acres and it looks like they've got a majority of it done so we've got Alex right there with the 8360 uh, I've got small spot I can do down there and that's where we're gonna jog down through and we're gonna work on that Sarah she must be on the far side of this field here so we'll go ahead and help these guys get this one finished up doesn't look as though there's any rain around the area so it looks like we should be able to get this finished up we just gotta kind of see what they've got left here so i'm running uh, this 4640 display so i gotta jump fields here so this is the shape file of this field we are right about there and yeah so let's go ahead and get going and we will join up with you once we get out of here and move on to the next field get my flashers turned off four-wheel drive turned on plow down let's go Ah, hit the wrong remote. All right, there, there we go. 
detent that SCV lever. There we go. So as you can see, there's been a fair amount of manure applied to this ground. Now you might be wondering what size is the what size comparison is the plow you're pulling, Andy, to the plow that Alex is pulling? Well, hers is about three feet wider. Uh, basically the same concept, however, these shanks on this disc ripper go in the ground a little farther, and it's got the disc halters front and rear. Does a little better of a job. It's got a finer finish to it because we've got the discs running on the rear. Oh, I can just barely see Sarah over on that far, far side there. So we'll get moved down to this other end. We've got to plow this other end the other way. We'll work on that. Let them guys get back together once Sarah gets, or once Alex gets done on this side. Uh, the first year we chopped this, the chopper was brand new. And right about in this area right here, we broke the other side of the rear axle in that. And the chopper sat down there about where Alex is, is right now. Uh, for a couple of days, they came out, put another drive hub assembly on it, and they were driving it down the road, and the differential locked up on it. Uh, not last year, but the year before, Jared, he ended up getting a 900 stuck down by the road down there. We had that thing stuck so bad, we couldn't get it out. We had to unload the trailer, and unhook a dump wagon couldn't get it with a chopper and uh, had to hook one of the dump wagon tractors on to it to get it out <laughs> then we came over with the tunnel handler and loaded the corn silage into uh, I don't remember it must have been another silage truck or something but uh, we had dealt with our problems that's for sure in this particular field here so we'll uh, keep her let here and uh, we'll join up with you once we get done and we get out of here Is gonna do it for this farm they're making their last pass coming at us but we just got done doing the headland down on that far end down there and the driveway to get out of here is over to our right so we're just gonna go ahead and make sure that they're pulling their last pass here now down on the end of this little narrow strip here they did the headland down there and it looks like they are done Sarah's got that pass there Alex is coming up in behind her looks like we're all set here so we're gonna make our way to the road and uh, we're gonna head to the next farm. Mike's got a blown hydraulic hose. He went back to the farm to get hydraulic oil. And we're gonna help him determine where that leak is coming from. So he should be back to the field that we're headed to about the time we get there.
we've got this field all done now and we are going to exit out through the tractor road here to the right. So we got Alex right in front of us, Sarah's up in front of Alex, and we are number three here. So the farm that we're headed to next, uh, like I was saying a little bit earlier here, uh, Mike, he is in that. Uh, field that we're headed to next he blew a hydraulic line or something on the 7930 and he went back to the farm to get some hydraulic oil and once we get to where he's at we'll help him determine what is leaking on his tractor and hopefully we can get that fixed so Sarah's folded up she's going to head out to the right here we're gonna go by the uh, dairy barn and we'll get out on the road and head to the next field here scratch our way out cover our tracks up that they plowed before this one was right up here to our right just on the other side of this hedgerow here so this field coming up on our left we had wheat in it last year we harvested the wheat off of it then we seeded it down with alfalfa So that looks like a pretty good uh, stand of alfalfa. That is Roundup ready. It is herbicide resistant. We had some issues with some weeds coming in here uh, last fall on uh, some lamb's quarter and whatever like that. Auburn egg came over. They sprayed it. We watched it all fall along and I'm like, oh boy, you know, this is not good. And they said, hold out, it's going to kill itself out, it should do alright. We were worried that we should maybe come in here with a bush hog or what have you. And they said, it's going to do alright. It did just that. It, those weeds killed themselves out and they are gone. So this field to the right, which is right in behind the dairy barn, they plowed that here just before they, uh, yesterday rather, just before they ended up getting into the field that we just got done with now. And that is gonna make it a wraps for uh, this farm here. I think there was 20, 25 fields all together did I count over on this farm and that is uh, gonna do it for uh, this farm and now we're gonna move closer to home here so we'll join up with you once we get to the field that Mike is in and we'll try to figure out what he has for a hydraulic oil leak
she just made it. <laughs> Oopsie. When that train's coming through, it's coming through. Yeehaw. this camera saying but right when Sarah got up to the tracks the light started flashing she slowed down she says I'm going because the bars are going to be coming down on top of me they need to give a little more warning than that <laughs> I don't know how many times this train goes through here but it's like four or five six times a day this is all I like a mile from the farm that we just pulled out of here. That's a long one. Wow. There it is. Up go the bars. We giddy up. A double set of tracks here. Yeah. Alrighty. Well. The field's like three miles from here so we'll join up with you when we get to the field <laughs> you can't just cruise across these tracks because uh, they're uneven so yeah got a few cars behind us yeah yeah Look at this guy's got one of them lay down bikes huh yeah Alrighty, we'll join up with you when you get to the field. Yeehaw. So, this is the next farm that we're going to plow. Mike is over here. He's got a hydraulic oil leak on the 7930, which is parked right there. He has gone back to the farm, and he has loaded up some hydraulic oil, and he needs my assistance to help him figure out what is leaking on that 7930 so after i shut the camera off i ended up calling uh sarah to see <laughs> what she thought of that experience as far as going across the railroad tracks she said that once she got up to the railroad tracks the lights turned on and she uh said you know come on cars you got to move out of the way well the cars that uh, had crossed the tracks they had seen to their left that there was a train coming they pulled off the track and they wanted to see how things were going to end up well those light bars or the lights that turned on and then the bars that dropped were like just a few seconds before the train actually came through so what'd you think of that one that was a little close huh <laughs> was that fun or what oh, that huh that's one way to get a new chisel plow huh yeah, yeah. Oh, so uh mike is gonna work on this side of the field here it's real stony on these short rounds and we're gonna go ahead and work on the larger part of the field where there isn't much rock. Mike is just pulling in here now. I'm gonna go ahead and find the oil leak on that tractor. 
and if I have to go back and make a hydraulic hose he's just gonna run mine I'll get a hydraulic hose made or whatever is wrong with that tractor and we'll uh, get him fixed up and going it's um, supposed to be raining by now but we haven't gotten any rain yet so well toodaloo let's get going come on come on let's get going stay out of the way of the trains okay <laughs> all right well before we help mike sarah's got a broken bolt here where are you broken this one the front one yeah. all right so what we're gonna do well wait a minute all i need is a hand we were gonna cut it with a did, do you have an inch and an eighth yeah socket all right i got a hammer and a punch i thought we were gonna have to grind this off with a grinder ah, to cut the head of the bolt off but it looks like i, I just need a hammer and a punch to get this out so i'm gonna run over to my tractor i've got a hammer and a punch in there and we're going to pound this bolt up out of there that should be pretty easy uh we've had these bend before in the middle and then you can't get it either way and you usually have to cut the head of the bolt off before i run oh you got a hammer and a punch okay Let's see if we can't get this done rather quickly here. Spin the bolt. Spin the bolt with the impact on... on uh... There you go. Oh, wow. Comes, come right out. He didn't even need me. All right, do you have any washers? Yeah. Where are they? In the toolbox. I'll go or grab them. I put a washer in the top one the bottom. Hold up. All right. All right, I don't know why you stopped me. You didn't need me. Uh, do you have an inch and an eighth wrench? If you don't, I have one. No, I have one. Okay. I'll give Mike a hand. That's really disappointing that you didn't need me. <laughs> All right, so Mike's going to... Actually, we need to give him a hand, get some hydraulic oil in this tractor here. Mike, we almost had a train accident. You wouldn't believe it. Sarah was in front sarah alex me i got the camera up because that's what i do you know she crosses she slows down to cross the tracks as she's crossing the tracks the red lights start flashing the bars came down hit the chisel plow and then the train goes through <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> yeah all right so how much oil have you got in both Five. All right, we're going to help him pour the other one in, and then we're going to figure out where this is leaking from. All right, so we're not really sure how Mike noticed this. I think what he did is he got out of the tractor to take a leak. I think that's how you notice this, Mike, because you didn't lose enough oil. It's this line right here coming off of the bottom of the oil cooler. It swings around, drops down through the frame, and then it comes up here to one of these steel lines. So he went back to the farm, got 10 gallons of hydraulic oil. I figured that he thought he was out of oil. I figured that 10 gallons would get us up enough to where we could start it up and run it to figure out where it was leaking from. And then we would uh, bring more oil over once we got the line fixed but there is the oil level right there so that 10 gallons uh brought it up to the safe mark so it has not been leaking that long so what we have is a 90 degree fitting on the bottom of the cooler it looks like a flat face number 12 or a number 16 
we don't have enough tools right here and my truck is over at the other farm so we're gonna ride over and uh, get that so how did we notice this how did you notice that I saw the you saw the oil on the oh you saw it on the okay that's what you call an observant operator so uh, you notice these things and you uh, get out ahead of the big problems right Mike so right where the hose came through the frame here um, he started it up and of course as soon as I opened the hood I could see this oil residue here and I didn't know if we had an oil cooler issue or what have you and I shut the he shut the tractor off I ran my finger down through there and I of course got it caught on some of the wires that were uh, out of the hydraulic hose so um, we've got some more tools and another truck so we might as well go and pick up that truck get back here and uh, get it apart you think the wind is gonna take that Michael yeah. could fly a kite today right they don't give these away <laughs> no they don't all right we'll join up with you in a minute here well we've got a toolbox here but I don't have the right size wrenches with me we've got a handy dandy part number here however we need like an inch and a three-quarter wrench or a couple of crescent wrenches to get this off and I don't know if it's like inch and five sixteenths or inch and three eighths to get up on to here but at any rate we don't have the hose anyways and looks like it's gonna rain Michael so being that it's saturday night i'm gonna get a hold of jake see if he's got that hose or can find it it's got a 90 on that one side it's flat face and a large flat face on this side and i doubt we have the ends so we'll have to uh fix this one when we get a hose for it so yeah well just like that it is starting to rain looks like sarah's been working on this big part of the field alex is over in that back part and i'm gonna start working on this one side and then it looks like we are on borrowed time here until this rain starts yeah So we'll at least do these short rounds or help Alex get that other little field done just so that we have stuff completed as we go here before we get rained out completely. Kaz has the parts or the, the fittings and whatever to make that hose. It is Saturday night. I don't want to bother anybody to go in special. However, if they find they're in there for whatever reason, they're gonna make that hose for us and we'll go over and get it uh, tomorrow. So we'll keep plugging away here and we'll see what this rain event brings us for a storm. And we'll join back up with you once we get to what we've got going on here. Well, we are to the stony part of this field. The rain is starting to move into this area. And we are just about done. So the girls are working on that side of the field. I've got just a little narrow strip left here. And then from our left over that way, we're going to do with the offset disc. So it looks like Mother Nature is going to allow us to get done with this side of the field before the rain really lets loose and comes down on us here. We've got Sarah coming at us. Alex is down past her. She must be just about turned around on the headland there. On the other end. 
So now we get down into this flat part here and I'm off the rock. I can speed it up a little bit here. It's a little bit wet right by this swamp here. Uh, we had our ag consultant. There's a pond over in there. Four or five years ago, our ag consultant called and he says, hey, um, one of our guys is doing soil sampling over on this farm here. It's about 50 acres right here on this stretch. And he's stuck out in the middle of that pond. There is the pond right there. I said stuck out in the middle of it with a four-wither. Maybe it was his truck or something. And I said, you got to be kidding me. We didn't have anything in the area that could pull him out. And I'm like, why are you not looking on the map to see what, the, what kind of topography you're in or what kind of ground you're in? Uh, that guy should have been the last guy that should have ended up in the pond with any kind of a piece of equipment. So that was kind of a funny story and he had some explaining to do to his boss. So there's Sarah, and then uh, Alex will appear through the back window here in a second as well. She's just passing us on the right, and she'll come into full view on the camera here. Once we get far enough, there she is right there. So that's going to do it for this video. Uh, Jake did text me back. I don't know if I had put that in the last clip or not, but Kaz Equipment does have the hydraulic fittings and the hose. They've got the fittings. They've got everything they need to make that hose up for the 7930, but it is Saturday night. Um, I got an idea that we're going to get a fair amount of rain here tonight. That isn't going to allow us to do much tomorrow other than work in the shop and Mike can run over to Kaz Equipment first thing Monday morning to get that hose. I'm going to take that hose off tomorrow, make sure there isn't any other things that we need on that tractor and then we'll be able to slap that hose on Monday morning when he gets back with it. So with that being said, that is going to do it for this video. I want to thank everybody for watching and we will catch you at the next one.